what do you put around your fruit trees to stop the grass? What kind of mulch? So the, when, they're, when they're young, like if I'm planting seedlings, the thing that I found uh, to be most uh, economical and uh, kind of have the most you know, benefits and things like that has been uh, actually a, a hemp mat. And they're, they're made right here in Alberta. I'm sure there's other places in the world that make them. The company's called Biocomposites Group. And essentially it's just this hemp fiber, which is like woven together at different densities. And they come in these different size sheets, whether they're like a like 12 inch up to like 24 inch. And I've played around with a bunch of different sizes and densities. And what I found works really well is like, it's called the, their 12 inch mat. And they, they come like they're pre-slit kind of halfway through. So you just kind of wrap it around the tree. Uh, so a 12 inch mat, that's, it's called a 1500 GSM or grams per square meter. So it's, it's uh, and I think it's about a, it's a half inch thick. And they're like, they're like 50 cents per mat. And so what I'm doing when I'm planting seedlings is I, I put uh, one of those mats down for two to three years, depending on how fast the tree grows. And that just keeps the grass around the base of the tree. And then I just mow alongside and that's all it needs to get kind of established. And, and, and then once it's, it's established, it can, it can now compete the grass. Um, that, that's like for planting like thousands of trees. Uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's the most adaptive and, and cheap and everything like that. The, however, like in my kind of orchards uh, or like uh, my kind of zone two orchards where I've got like larger fruit trees, the like wood chip mulch is, is really nice, but it, it's hard to scale that up to when you're planting. I plant 2000 trees a year or I have for the last four or five years and you can't, manually apply <laughs> wood chip mulch to 2000 trees economic although i mean there's i just also couldn't source that much in my bioregion it's not a available resource um however i think um who was uh who was uh versaland was that grant schultz? oh uh grant schultz yeah yeah i, I guess he, he was doing it he was using a, a silage bunk feeder to apply wood chip mulch at scale but again, like even if I I have all that technology, but wood chips are rare in my area. I live in the prairies. There's no trees. Yeah. So that'd be the other thing is like figure out what's rare or uh, really available in your area, and uh, an economical. I've used straw before as well. Um, it, it, the problem with that is it kind of it tends to bring in voles, and then you get problems with with damage and stuff like that. The the um, but the the other thing that I found uh, that I think is like. It's again, it's one of those things that uh, you do it once and you walk away and it just takes care of itself is comfrey. Uh, I think comfrey ar around the, um, the it's, it, it's one of the few things within like the permaculture literature that actually works <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, with, without, you know, like without some like major caveats. Um, it's like the comfrey has like really deep roots. Like I've, um, don't plant it in a garden. That's for, that's the first yes. thing. That's the one caveat. I made it, that mistake. It, 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 if it's tilled, it will spread like the Dickens, and you'll never like. It takes. I planted like as a as a like a nurse crop in my garden because I was going to take cuttings from it, but then we were tilling around it, and it started to like take over most of the garden, and um, so I was like, oh, to hell with this. I'm just going to dig it out. I thought, I dug like a three foot hole in my garden and like I, I found like the tap root and it started going down and it was as big as my like arm at three feet and like it was it was still going so like the um, the what I, I had to end up, end up covering with like tin uh and like cardboard for like three years to like starve it from sunlight and I eventually did get rid of it but if you have it around grass where it's not tilled it doesn't sucker at all if you if you get some of the non uh, seeding varieties and um, you basically plant it like around the drip line of your tree, pull out all the grass that's it's in between it and the tree, and it'll pr create like a moat that won't let any grass through. And then it, it self mulches because it, it grows up and it gets so big, it just falls over and you don't have to do anything. And it'll just, it'll create its own mulch. Uh, it's, it's a great pollinator plant. It, it's not thorny, so it's not going to like, you know, prevent you from picking your, your berries or things like that. Now, mind you, this is only for like big trees, like apples or uh, upper story species like that. And it also, it provides uh, potassium, uh, nitrogen, and a lot of, you know, calcium and magnesium and minerals and things like that. It's a dynamic accumulator. 
And uh, if you if you get one little root from like a friend or a couple of them, plant like a nursery somewhere where you you're like you can pull off of it. And then I just go around and I just I'll put like you know four or five cuttings around the perimeter of a tree, spaced a few feet apart, and um, and that's what I do kind of for my long term management. For, for mulch, but for the short term, you need to, you really do need to have some kind of a physical uh, barrier because you plant comfrey next to a seedling, it'll just take over and, and uh, um, you know, kill the plant. Wow, that's great, that's great advice. <laughs>